Hello, Mr. Natural here. Welcome to Mr. Natural's classroom. Well, today I'm going to show you how to number the staff and we're going to talk about key signatures from the point of view of music by interval. Um, if you can count from the number one through seven and count from seven back down to one, you can do this. The first thing to understand is that every line and every space on the staff is a number. And the number one can be, the beginning can be any line or any space anywhere on the staff. So we're going to do this first without clefts just to show you how it works so you can get used to this idea. So let's say that we decide this bottom line here should be where the number one is at. So then this would be the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is the next one. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Not eight. Everybody writes. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is a word for octave, which means eight notes away, but the do, re, mi scale doesn't have an eight. The number eight is still the number one, so since the pattern goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, that's it. So we continue one, this, two, three, and if we use ledger lines, that would be four. Above that would be five, two ledger lines, six. Above two ledger lines, seven. And then when we get to the third ledger line, that would be one again. So going backwards, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And if I want to go to ledger lines below, then one, seven, six, five, four, etc. So we're simply determining where, which line or which space is the number one and then labeling every number and every line and every space going up, in this case two octaves and coming down a half an octave. Now let's say we want to do that here. That's where, it, so then this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, etc. Coming backwards, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, etc. Simple so far? What if it starts on a space? Let's say it starts on that space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, one, seven, six, five, four, three, etc. Let's say we start on this space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, backwards, one, seven, six, five, etc. Okay, so it really depends on where the number one is at. And then everything is obvious going up and down the stairs from there. I also want you to notice something. There's a shorthand here. If we looked at, in this case, this is on a line. So if I look at only the lines going up, one, three, one, three, five, seven, two, four, going up, the next line up would be six. And coming down, this pattern backwards, one, six, four, two, etc. If I look here, starting on this line, as one and look at every line. One, three, five, seven, two, four, six. And coming down, one, six, four, two, etc. If I look here on the space, one, three, five, seven, um, two, four, six, and backwards, one, seven, one, six, four, Two. Over here, one, three, five, seven, two, four. Going backwards, one, six, four, two. This pattern, one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, which I call the circle of thirds, 
is every other note. And the circle of thirds gives us the spellings for every chord known. Every other number would give us what's called the circle of fifths. One, three, two, six, uh, one, uh, sorry, one, five, two, six, three, seven, four. And if we go from a line to a line to a line to a line up, or a line to a line to a line down, we'll either be going one, three, five, seven, rotating this way, two, four, six, one, or coming down from space to space to space to space, we'll be going one, six, four, two, seven, five, three, one, six, four, two, seven, five, three. This is the thing to remember. And if you can remember this forward and backwards, easy to, to label every line, every space. Now, in terms of key signatures, what does this mean? Well, key signatures used to mean clef. The word clef in French means key. And the clefs used to tell people where the number one was. If we put this clef here, this is called the G clef, and that would automatically mean that the number one was there back in the day. If we use this clef, here, this is called the F clef, the letter F, and that's where the number one used to be for the key of F. If we use the, uh, uh, I don't know how people draw it anymore, it used to be drawn this way, and some people draw it this way, this is the way I draw it. This is the C clef, and this points at where the letter C or where one would be. So for the C clef, it pointed at C. For the F clef, it pointed at the F, F scale. For the G clef, it pointed at the G clef. And there were no sharps or flats used in those days. Later, they found out that these clefs could only fit on lines. And they did not fit on the spaces. Because the spit, your eye falls through the space. The line is positive space. This becomes negative space. And so if you tried to put a clef on a space, you wouldn't be able to see that clearly where the number one started. So someone later on started inventing this idea of putting sharps and flats on. Now, if there are sharps and flats on the staff, it turns out we don't need the clefs because the sharps and flats are put on, start, their pattern starts depending on what clef is there. And all we need to know is the sharps or the flats themselves. In the case of something that has sharps, if the key signature is this thing called the G clef, they always start with the letter F, which is right here on this line. And that, always numerically, the sharp that is the furthest to the right is always the number seven. Doesn't matter if there's one sharp up there or 50 sharps up there, the one that's the furthest to the right will always be the number seven. If that's the number seven, five, three, one, bullseye. The one sharp is the key of G. And the number one would start here on this line right here. Okay, if we have two sharps, the first sharp always goes on this line, the second sharp always goes down here on that space. And again, the sharp is always the number seven. So if this is the number seven, three, uh, seven, five, three, one, right here, if we use this letter G and go G, F, E, D, this would be the key of D. When we have three sharps, they put it on that line, they put the next sharp here, the next sharp comes up here, and this is what? Seven. So this is seven, five, three, one. Right here is one. If this is the key G, then that would be A, and this is the key of A. So the rightmost sharp is always, always, number seven. I can do this as long as I want. I don't have a time to um, Now let's take more sharps. Let's put a, a lot of them out there. Usually there's this sharp, then that sharp, then that sharp, 
Then they come down to this sharp. Then they come down <coughs> to this sharp. Then they go up to this sharp. One, two, three, four, five. Here's six sharps. Let's look at the last sharp. The last sharp is right here on that space. Therefore, that's the number seven. Five, three, one. Here we are on what would be F. And there is a sharp on F. So this is the key of F sharp, which has one, two, three, four, five, six sharps. Now, theoretically, there's no end to this. We could start adding double sharps to this, and the same thing would be true. The last double sharp farthest to the right would be the number seven. We'll do that in another video. Okay, let's look at flats now. If we use flats, again, with the treble clef here, the first flat is usually the letter B flat, which always winds up right there on that line. If we put in another flat, it goes right here on the E line. The flat furthest to the right is always the number four. And so if we count down four, three, two, one, this is where the number one is going to be on this line. And you see there's a flat there, and the flat is B flat, so this is the key of B flat. Now we don't need to care, we don't care what the names of these things are, we just need to know where the number one is so we can start numbering in all cases. Again, with flats, doesn't matter how many of them there are, the next one comes in here, the next one comes in here. So what happens? This one would be the number four, that line. So if I count four, three, two, one, right here is where the number one, I start counting like that, and that happens to be on the, this is G, that's A with a flat, this is in ABCs, the key of A flat. And again, by number, we do not need to know what the letter name is. We just need to know where the number one is. So let's go over this again very quickly and show you if the clef were changed, these sharps and flats would not be placed on the same line. The thing I tried to bring out in my other video on the coding key signatures was that everyone teaches these, key sign these um, clefs as being fixed and the clefs are not fixed. In the old days, the clef was the key. It pointed where one was or do started, and it could be anywhere on any line on any staff. And one of the clefs is the letter name G, one of the clefs is the letter F, and one of the clefs is the letter C, and those letters are in Old English, so they have a lot of frills and curly cues and stuff, so they look like musical symbols and not the letters of the alphabet but they are the letters of the alphabet. It's a fancy font. Okay, now let's say I don't have any clef, and the sharp starts this time right here on this line. The reason this is F still F sharp, but I have a clef here that's forcing that line to be the name F. And what happens is this by itself would be the number seven. So here's five, here's three, and I would start reading this by that being one, two, three, four, etc. If I have two sharps, there's going to be one on that line, and then one down here on this space. That now becomes the number seven. So here's one, two, three, four, seven, six, five, four, etc. If I have one, two, three, four, five sharps. That sharp is the number seven. Five, three, one. We don't care what it's called. That's where one is. If I have um, um, If I have this down here, and on this line, this becomes a number seven. So
So that here is 1. We don't need to know in intervals what the name of it is. We just play Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Ti, Do, or we number any scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we can begin reading and playing this music. For the flats, again, for a sharp, the rightmost sharp is always the number 7. For flats, let's say I put a clef on here that forced this space right there to be B flat because I put the I put a C clef over here. So that's B flat. So then if that's B flat, that's the number four. This would be four, three, two, one. In this case, one starts on that bottom line and I can now label. If I have two flats, there'll be a flat here, there'll be a flat there, and this will be the number four, three, and now this will be the number one. If I have a uh, flat here, flat here, then a flat here, that's on that space, that's, that's on that line, that's on 4 down 5, up 4, down 5, if I have that last flat is right here on this space, then this is the number 4, 3, 2, the ledger line below the staff would be the number 1, or 4, 5, 6, 7, right here would be the number 1. And again, we don't need to know what the name is. So, flats, always the flat on the most extreme right is always the number four. In reading by number, all you have to do is number every line in space, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, seven. All you need to do is if there are sharps and flats, take the rightmost sharp, make it the number seven and find out where one is. It would either be the one right above it or you can count down if you don't have room above. If you have flats, the last flat is always going to be the number four, and you can count down or count up to find out where one is. And once you know where one is, you can label that music and start playing it in any key that you've labeled as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We do not need clefs in this system at all. The only time clefs are necessary is if there are no key signature, no sharps or flats, and we're in the key of C. And then we would have to look at the clef letter name to find out which line it's describing as either a G, an F, or a C, and then figure out where the letter name C is from that point. So if it's not in the key of C, if it has any sharps or any flats in it at all, this system has a great advantage. And all you do is count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And also it really helps if you learn to sing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. And also patterns. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 1, 7, 1, 6, 1, 5, 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, 1. And now I've just sang all the major, all the minor intervals, as their position within the key at by a whole number, the number one through seven, and I can figure out how to play because all any sharps or any flats, once we figure out where one is, we discount them entirely for the rest of the piece. They the global the global sharps and the global flats no longer matter once they've showed us where one is. And we don't need to do anything with them. If sharps and flats come up in the piece, then we will take that number and either make it a five sharp or make it a three flat. We'll modify it according to that accidental that's on that note only within the piece, not globally. So this is a lot simpler than what we're doing. There's only one thing to know. Sharps are seven, flats are four. Thank you.